high on a hillside overlooking the sea. A group of children are herding goats. One of them points out to sea. Look! Out there! On the horizon! What is it? It looks like it's a huge wave coming towards us. They wave their arms and shout to the village below. Mom! Dad! Something's coming. Something big. Yes, something big is coming. Both for me, the planet, and its creatures. Human civilizations could be overwhelmed. Human creatures could become extinct. I could lose my atmosphere. This is the climate tsunami. I've always had a problem with the sun. It's huge and very hot. And, and a lot of what comes from it is extremely toxic. But a partnership of sun and sea generated a miracle. In the oceans, new versions of life emerged. They tamed the sun's radiation and even domesticated it. This life created a thin onion skin of gases and atmosphere. Nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, water vapor, and methane, held in place by gravity, balanced by life, for life. My atmosphere is a theatre where I give performances. At the Daily Show, it is a glittering dance. Not much changed in millions of years. The sun warms the oceans and the land. Clouds form, rain falls, over and over and over and over again. And sometimes, storms brew up. Human creatures have made really good drawings of some of my storms. With ice forming high up, then dropping and melting as torrential rain. I'm not quite square onto the sun. As I go round, my atmosphere delivers different things at different times of the year. Snow, monsoons, drought, and regular rain. For millions and millions of years, my atmosphere sustained this sweet and an unproblematic balance. But then, about 170 years ago, on this little island, human creatures began mining coal on an industrial scale and burning it to make steam. Steam drove machines. Everybody seemed to fall in love with carbon. All over the planet, my, my surface was scraped and torn open to get at coal. 
It was amazing to watch. Human creatures made carbon and, and burning it the foundation of their civilizations. The trouble is, any kind of burning of carbon combines it with oxygen. Furniture stores, forest fires, wood fires, central heating, traffic, planes. Planes like this are burning five or six tons of carbon every hour they're in the air, all of which turns into carbon dioxide. Burning a tank full of jet or vehicle fuel produces three times as much carbon dioxide. Human creatures don't yet seem to understand this. With half of all human creatures living in cities, they've become carbon dioxide factories. Transport, heating, lighting, cooking, cooling. And if you do live in a city, this is normality. Normality has become toxic. Normality really matters. My jungles and, and savannas, my insects and, and birds, my fish in the oceans, and the creatures of the great rivers and forests. This life has always needed the atmospheric sunscreen. It was a normality that life created. But now, there's way more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere than we all need. Way too much heat is being trapped, and 90% of it is being stored in the oceans. This isn't reversible. You can't cool the oceans. It means bigger, badder, hotter weather everywhere an oncoming tsunami of potentially catastrophic climate heating. And what would be a matching response to this urgency? Maybe a rapid global mobilization? And what has happened? Human creatures did research Reports were published and ignored. We shouldn't be focusing in on specific sectors, but look across sectors. Press and conferences all were held to develop the appropriate responses. That Questions were asked. Ask about how is it that the word Amazon does not appear at all in this report? Was that a result of scientists were very the reassuring? Delegation? We know about the huge challenges of, of climate change, but I don't think we want to get a, over a message of despair. We want to get over a message that all actions do make a difference. Politicians and governments had meetings. The savvy activists had their say. But alongside all of this, global carbon dioxide levels still keep rising. It's business as usual.
so much building like this, building for tomorrow and, and beyond, a, a future of steel and cement that assumes tomorrow will be the same as today. The upside of business, as usual, is that it, it supports ordinary daily life for, for billions of people. Children go to school, students go to classes. On the street, lots of different agendas and destinations can be mixed and matched. as usual does have momentum. I was very slow to grasp that it wasn't just my fossil fuel driving this momentum. There was also a cult, a, a religion, a, a god of growth with, with priests and, and devotees and, and cathedrals, lots of cathedrals. The cult leaders seem to be in love with money. They love markets. Above all, they, they seem to worship capital and its growth. I began to see my fossil fuels being crystallized as, as corporations, jobs, careers, wealth, and luxury. Coal, oil, and gas being burned to keep capital growing for a tiny number of human creatures. And hooked into this, huge numbers of people who keep the faith by consuming vast amounts of products that feed the growth of capital. I think they're called mortgages and insurance and white goods. And then there's the metal insects that, that they ride about in. It's only a few tens of years ago since there were none of them. Then suddenly there are nests of them everywhere. Millions and millions of them. And this is what capital wants. Growth without limits. More of everything. Look at all these planes in the air on one day. And bigger and bigger cargo ships loaded with, with coloured boxes. There seem to be twice as many human creatures as they were not long ago. And the more of them there are, the more they seem to need. And because it can come from anywhere on the planet, it does. On ferries and in trucks. In a French village store, Red onions from New Zealand, garlic from Mexico or Argentina, yellow onions from New Zealand, and potatoes from France. And meat from who knows where. Enormous amounts of it.
But even if the production of food and some necessities doesn't generate much carbon dioxide, the packaging, marketing, shipping uh, and sale of it does. And it's no surprise that growth without limits produces carbon dioxide without limits. Capital's need for growth reaches everywhere on my surface. And the land on which ancient forests grow becomes an asset, something to be exploited. Remove the trees, plant the cash crop, grow profit. Produce and sell palm oil. Human creatures have this word greed. Is this what they mean? More and more forests cut down for industrial food production. This is business as usual. Huge, complex, running faster and faster to create growth, but gradually becoming more and more crystalline. I've watched a few human creature civilizations collapse, and I see business as usual heading for no business at all. For human creatures, meeting, greeting, and eating shapes the day. This is innocent enough. It was when this square only served a population who could uh, walk to it. But lately, the sheer scale of, of cities has, has escalated. Capital growth, better health care, and growing populations come together to make cities the sharp end of the climate tsunami. Half of, of all human creatures live in cities and everything, every single thing they do, contributes to carbon dioxide emissions. On a scale of millions, hundreds of millions, billions of people, Billions of people with lives to live. Children, families, uncles and aunts, births, weddings and funerals. Locally, their, their carbon dioxide would be negligible. But collectively, globally and, and, and growing, it turns up the heat on the planet. But any consideration of stopping, pausing, let alone reversing global heating, has to include the scale of present commitments. Heating, lighting, work, sewage, education, health care, and food production and distribution. How could this many human creatures literally cemented together in homes and work, possibly make the scale of changes needed to become 
zero carbon dioxide emitters, or better. What's emerged for me is that pessimism equals realism. I no longer have, have time for hope. Extinction beckons. And life goes on. Take care of yourself. Take care of those around you. I was going to stop here, but there are a few other things to, to speak about and, and, and show. People used to believe that I was flat. Then, not long ago, there were lots of big fireworks. 25 seconds into flight. Temperature pressures continue to look good on all three boosters. They were sending little metal insects with cameras into the space all around me. And human creatures began to be able to see me or, or see pictures of me as a whole. I was photographed in a lot of detail. At last, I thought, human creatures would see me as a living system, or, or myriad systems nested within systems. Atoms, molecules, bacteria, creatures. A, a creative chaos. Ripening, flourishing, and, and returning to chaos, and the emergence of, of, of new organisms. And surely, seeing this, human creatures would take more care of me, and more care of themselves. But I'd reckon without crystallization. I saw it begin tens of thousands of years ago as the fluid movement of, of nomads and hunter-gatherers began to crystallise into villages and towns and, and later cities. Industrialisation accelerated this uh, crystallisation and in a, a tick of planet time, half of human creatures were living in cities. Gigantic cities that are numerical, regimented, mechanised and, and synchronised. Human creature crystallisation celebrates division and separation into categories. Time, packaging, digitization, and the exploitation of other creatures. Consumption, wealth creation, and growth, inflated by capital accumulation, make crystallization more intense. Crystallisation into cities didn't only accelerate consumption. It also shaped human creature identity. 
some kind of lack that can never be satisfied has been created. This has to be fed with brands, trends, and the promise of luxury. For many human creatures, surviving crystallization seems to be a daily task. Buy more shoes. Move to a bigger, better home. Even if this means a deal with crystallized finance. Stock markets, insurance, and capitalism are, are human creature systems. As they become increasingly crystallized, they're imperative to grow capital and ignore the consequences, the externalities. This has cut off any connection with me. From the crystal palaces of human creature civilization, the creative chaos of the earth, of me, seems to be something to be used and, and exploited. But while the crystallization of cities may confine and restrict human creatures, and even imprison them in debt, all, all human creatures have a continuing connection with the chaos and order of my planetary systems. A body. <laughs> Some human creatures celebrate having a body. They work out. They take care of themselves. But there's been a long human creature history of bodies as sinful bodies as an unavoidable inconvenience. One of the things that went missing because of this is that I am, and my planet systems are, a kind of body. Yes, planet Earth is a kind of body. And I've become an unavoidable inconvenience. I'm sick. I'm running a temperature, a fever. When human creatures eliminated most of their predators, they began to live a lot longer and, and far more of their children survived. And then human creatures moved from being benign partners with me to a form of infection, a, a toxic infection. And the toxicity put a carbon dioxide roof around us. Now we all have a fever. So how come human creatures and their wildernesses became a toxic infection of my earth body? Crystallization, yes. But as male human creatures became mechanized and weaponized, alongside this, the earth became feminized. Separated from civilization as an inexhaustible mother nature. Beautiful, awe-inspiring in its stillness. Terrifying in its fury. Wow. But subordinate to civilization's needs and wishes. This separation was a big mistake. Because of it, I became an inexhaustible resource. A fountain of cheap energy. A human creature civilization became a predator. And I, the planet, became the prey.
human creatures don't see it yet. But the prey, my Earth body, has created an autoimmune reaction to the human creature infection. Global heating. Driven by these higher temperatures, weather events are becoming more intense. More damaging. And there's also shocking injustice as, as communities least responsible for global heating suffer devastation. Industrialization and crystallization have combined to produce a climate emergency. It's a form of global self-harm. And take a look at this. My Earth body as a, a minor component in one of the major self-harm systems. They have consistently denied and lied about their role in, in global heating. They were making videos about it three decades ago. Since 1850, the consumption of these fossil fuels has increased a hundredfold. Add to this the more recent burning of the tropical forests, and the result has been a marked and accelerating increase in the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Region-by-region region analysis of world temperature records shows a small but significant warming trend over the century with a marked increase in the 1980s. Reduced to global averages, it shows a rise of just half a degree Celsius. This could be due to some natural climatic change, but it does accord with computer models based on the known atmospheric processes and predicted build-up of the greenhouse gases. These models contain many uncertainties, but they forecast that by 2050, global mean temperature could have increased by at least a degree and a half, possibly near a four. Intelligent, accurate, and hidden for 30 years behind a wall of denial. The fossil fuel industries try to be seen as friendly, a place to save your smiles. A, a, a cheery toy land that, that puts petrol in your car and uh, plastic in your shopping bag. But I'm heating up. Everybody's heating up. Carbon dioxide is increasing. And what do the fossil fuel merchants talk about? The increasing demand for energy and how to meet it. Doers need energy and demand for it is expected to grow. So Chevron's finding more homegrown energy more precisely. Digitizing the way we work with advanced data analytics, helping us develop more productive wells. And we're exploring ways to use renewable energy in our operations. Doing more with less. More data and precision to help meet growing demand. Hmm, that's going to get a lot of likes. Chevron, innovating to meet the energy demands of today and tomorrow. Like other empires before them, the fossil fuel industries are, are, are stuck between a rock and a hard place. Their businesses are, are undermining life on the planet. And what do they do? Choose to wind down production voluntarily? or go out of business in a catastrophe that, that threatens extinction. Their choice doesn't seem to be in doubt. 
Everyone's putting more than $8 billion back in the U.S. economy this year. In pipes, cement, steel, jobs, energy. You need to get the wheels turning. I'm proud of that. Making real things. For real. That make a real difference. But with our scale and know-how, our partnerships and new investments, we'll search for the energy the world needs to progress, seeking new possibilities in everything everywhere so we can keep powering dreams and ambitions because we don't just produce energy we advance it keep advancing is very entrancing but even a planet can see that keep advancing means keep growing and the sweet green flower distracts from the reality on the ground. This kind of disinformation, along with well-financed outright denial, hides the context of fossil fuel extraction, profit-taking, tearing open my crust, and complicity in putting countless gigatons of carbon dioxide into my atmosphere. The biblical and actual ascent of human creatures has taken them to planetary dominance. Urban crystallization consolidated this dominance. But the sheer scale and complexity of crystallization brings vulnerability, rigidity, and perhaps most problematically, addiction. The fossil fuel industries function as dealers supplying users with their daily carbon fix. The vast scale of the, of the dealer's wealth tends to overwhelm states and governments. And the dealers in turn are dependent on the even greater wealth and power of the owners of fossil fuel reserves. It's hard to see the fossil fuel dealers and the oil reserve owners letting go of their wealth and power, except via the climate catastrophe that they are co-creating. And similarly for fossil fuel users, withdrawal from carbon fuel addiction probably means these human creatures winding back their lifestyles a hundred years. Uh, lots, lots of human creatures see what they'd lose by that and switch off. States and governments see confronting the climate emergency as political suicide and also switch off. Sadly, as a planet, I've been here several times before, though without carbon dioxide. I've seen human creature civilizations like this expand and flourish and provide luxury for a tiny elite. But the emperors and politicians couldn't see past the end of their noses. Harvests failed or climate changed faster than human creatures could handle it and, and their civilizations fell over, leaving survivors to struggle in niches. The children are right to point to inactivity and right to claim that their future has been obliterated. And it's time to notice that for some human creatures, one of the futures is already here.
Not an appetizing future, but global heating means it's it's there, behind the surface of, uh, of everyday reality. And more and more children know that. My name is Greta Thunberg. I am 16 years old, I come from Sweden, and I want you to panic. I want you to act as if the house was on fire. <coughs> to panic, unless you have to, is a terrible idea. But when your house is on fire, and you want to keep your house from burning to the ground, then that does require, require some level of panic. We are in the midst of the sixth mass extinction, and the extinction rate is up to 10,000 times faster than what is considered normal, with up to 200 species becoming extinct every single day. Erosion of fertile topsoil, Defer deforestation of our great forests, toxic air pollution, loss of insects and wildlife, the acidification of our oceans. These are all disastrous trends being accelerated by a way of life that we here in our financially fortunate part of the world, see as our right to simply carry on. Well, our house is falling apart. And we are rapidly running out of time. And yet, basically nothing is happening. Everyone and everything needs to change. So why waste precious time arguing about what and who needs to change first. 
everyone and everything has to change. But the bigger your platform, the bigger your responsibility. The bigger your carbon footprint, the bigger your moral duty. And many of us who will be affected the most by this crisis, people like me, are not allowed to vote. Nor are we in a position to shape the decisions of business, politics, engineering, media, education or science. Because the time it takes for us to educate ourselves to do that simply does no longer exist. And that is why millions of children are taking it to the streets, school striking for the climate to create attention for the climate crisis. You need to listen to us, we who cannot vote. You need to vote for us, for your children and grandchildren. And I have read that some parties do not even want me standing here today because they so desperately do not want to talk about climate breakdown. Why do they not want to hear her? Could it be uh, because the children know that business as usual can't continue, isn't going to continue? Protests and demos seem to be telling everybody that heading off or minimizing the climate crisis can't be done using the systems that caused it. Not only that, but crystallization makes them vulnerable to climate heating and catastrophic collapse. It's hard to accept, but progress is over. It certainly seems to be time for human creatures to say a rapid goodbye to the, to the golden threads of, of, of luxury and wealth and to replace more and bigger with enough. The crystal world you have created is astonishing and improbable. But crystallization freezes out love Take care of each other. Take care of yourselves. Take care of me. Goodbye for now. <laughs>